Let's do some news! My name is Mike P, aka Phony. Today's date is July 16th, 2021. The time is around 3 p.m. or so Pacific time. It is a beautiful 78 degree day here in Northern California as it usually is. Usually every other week it's like 100 or something like that. But usually it's like 78 across the board. What's the temperature in the bay? Eh, like 70 something all the time. Except for last week, it was shit. This week, it's beautiful. Enough with the weather. So, <laughs> this week, we've had a number of crazy announcements that have happened. We did not do news last week, and we have some things left over from last week that I would want to cover. What's in the mirror? Uh, that's my Mass Effect mask right there. Right there. I had to put it somewhere. I mean, it's everything, everything in my life back here is, is a clutter clusterfuck everything i'm gonna do that thing i'm gonna do that thing that jen saw on tiktok where it's like if you just dedicate 10 minutes don't make a task don't be task oriented be time oriented right task oriented is when you say i'm gonna clean my room right i'm gonna clean my studio and i look at it i'm like fuck it's never gonna happen right but time oriented time oriented is where you say i'm gonna spend 10 minutes 10 minutes cleaning out my studio just 10 i could do 10 minutes absolutely and just do a little bit of that every day sounds like it might work what are we talking about oh that's right what on war what what in the world is going on with world of warcraft seriously i know a lot of you guys play wow I know a lot of you guys play WoW, and I know that it's been having some, eh, so people, every time there's some kind of content update, people are upset because the story didn't quite go the way that they thought, or they spent years and decades ramping up a character only to turn them into something they probably shouldn't have been because, I don't know, lazy writing or something, uh, and I don't know that to be true because I don't know the story. So, what is happening in the wide, wide world of Warcraft? What? We know that lately we have Jaina, Garrosh, never heard of him. <laughs> hey, wow, it's legit. We are redeeming genocide. There you go. Garrosh, you're nothing wrong. Yeah, what happened? Did it die yet? Well, right now, and what I want to talk about today, because again, I know a lot of you guys are, are, are WoW players, like active WoW players. I think a great majority of you have played WoW before, like myself. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are still playing it. So I want to know, what are your guys' thoughts on what's happening with this exodus, exodus, uh, to Final Fantasy XIV? So we know that, and we're going to talk about Asmongold today. We know that he is a uh, divisive person, uh, personality-wise. I'm not a fan of Asmongold because of some of the things that he said. But at the same time, some of the things that he said, I'm just kind of like, oh, yeah. You know, sometimes you agree with somebody you don't necessarily like, and that's fine. Um, and so he says, WoW had it coming. Blizzard had it coming. They refused to innovate. It's kind of simple. 14 is better than retail. Decisive. He's a prick. He's a prick. Uh, yeah, that's all. No, uh, no, I agree. He's kind of a prick. <laughs> he's kind of he's kind of a prick <laughs> for sure. But that aside, he started playing Final Fantasy XIV, and you know he had something like two hundred thousand people, upwards of two hundred thousand people watching him play uh, for the first time playing Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, here's a clip of him. Uh, turns up just a smidge. When he first exits the like starting area, and then he gets makes his way into the the public area, and there's just tons and tons and tons of people greeting him, and it's fucking chaos, right? Uh, people watching the stream seriously, like well over a hundred thousand watching this stuff. Um, he's still well over a hundred k just days ago. Yes, he he has said that. Uh, that he still plays WoW, but he has been streaming Final Fantasy XIV. So why do we care if one person... This thing, there's so much just so much shit happening here, I'm just going to pause it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fucking with my encoding. Uh, so why do we care that one person... One person is uh, is is switching uh, switching to another game, possibly switching uh, to another game. Why is it, why is it that we had uh, a... Uh, uh, the WoW 
uh, or a lead product uh, manager for uh, a Blizzard. Why did why did he have to go out of his way on Twitter and say call uh, Asma Gold an asshole? Um, that racism shit is sad. Yes. Oh, so I I don't have that as part of this, but um, right now I don't. I feel like before all this, I felt like WoW was kind of teetering, you know, like it usually is when there's like a little lull in content or the content is unfulfilling. Uh, and I, I believe me, I've been there. I've been there. I've, I played WoW a long time. <laughs> like, I've been there through the gaps where you're just like, well, I guess I'll just log in and watch something on the other screen. You know, like, it's, you just don't know what you're going to do. And so I feel like at this point, this is not the time to start, you know, bashing probably one of your biggest individual streamers. Asmogold definitely is one of the biggest uh, WoW streamers. Um, and so, for a lead project dev, uh, a product manager uh, at Blizzard to say, you know, nasty things about him, it's kind of fucked up. Now, uh, he has said, he says uh, here, it's actually kind of funny, I love his response, uh, Asma Gold. He says, people keep linking me pics of Blizz employees talking shit about me. I don't care. I talk shit about them all the time. I'm a big boy. I can handle it. I don't need people harassing them to defend my honor. This uh, developer, this uh, employee in particular, actually ended up locking down his account, says death threats aren't cool and all this stuff. Um, no statement has been made from Blizzard or anybody saying, uh, you know, maybe this employee shouldn't have said, and just said these things about this really fucking popular fucking streamer of their game. But I have to say, it probably doesn't help. You know, it probably doesn't help. <laughs> I respect him just because it was like that. He's capable of talking, uh, taking and giving heat like an adult. Exactly. Exactly. Um, there's a lot of people I see hoping, uh, hopping on this uh, Final Fantasy XIV hype train and asking when the game gets fun and keep playing because it's a thing now. Yeah, I mean, well, some people are, are, are just flat out enjoying it too. Yeah, some of them are probably waiting for the, um, I don't know, for for something that maybe doesn't exist <laughs> in, in Final Fantasy XIV. I haven't played Final Fantasy XIV since 2.0, so I don't know where it's at right now. But I will say, though, that, you know, him going... It's so crazy, like, you know, him going to, to Final Fantasy XIV is like, this article's everywhere. Asmongold rallies hordes of World of Warcraft players to Final Fantasy XIV. Mike, Final Fantasy XIV's stream when? Boy, I thought of it. I thought about it, right? But it's just like, oh, man, do I really want to jump into that? Like, that's an investment. I told myself I would probably never jump into another MMO anytime soon. Uh, but it's because of that, because it's such an investment. Um, I know that... He started a few days with the free version. So, so, so just, just so you guys know, like our internal metrics, I just checked them today, right? Yegorex, my boy Yegorex and his, his, his amazing bot that tracks all of your guys' gameplay, uh, says that there is an equal number of people playing both classic, I'm sorry, both uh, retail and uh, Final Fantasy XIV. Equal number of people in this community. It's like 45 each, like 44 and 45 or something like that. The hours spent is only off by like, it's like hundreds of hours. And so there's only like a 20 hour difference between the two, sometimes less than that. Uh, Final Fantasy 14 has been on top. Right, seconded by retail, uh, and but retail in general is a little bit, little bit higher. Did you know that critically and Final Fantasy XIV has a free trial? Hey, did you guys know that it has a free trial? You could just try it. Uh, so I know even within my own community, which I know for a fact is a WoW community because I see the fucking numbers. All right, it's always World of Warcraft retail, and then. Classic, and then like everything else, like every, and, and it's like a gap, right? Like this, and then everything else, right? Uh, all the way up to level six, including the critically claimed Heaven's Word expansion. Do oh! it's a perfect storm of event. Uh, see, it's 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 it being a good game, having an amazing free trial, and some very big streamers like Asmon and Co jumping over. Yeah. Um, why would I try to destroy my sanity? <laughs> this isn't a Destiny Two community. <laughs> we tried, man. We tried. We really tried. <laughs> we tried to make it an Outriders community too. But you know, <laughs> it's more of a Wreckfest community, I think. <laughs> Wreckfest and golf with your friends community. That's us, really. <laughs> um, wow, it's dead. Don't hurt me, friends. It's a space engineers community. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I, uh, you know, another another person I'm not necessarily a fan of is uh, uh, Mark Kern, one of the biggest names in failed game studios, has thoughts on the failures of Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> Just for a little bit of backstory, Mark Kern, aka Grums, uh, Firefall Rip, you already see it there, Red 5, uh, mismanaged a studio uh, in the most public way possible. Uh, you guys remember the bus? You guys remember the Firefall bus? Yeah, like they had like tow it <laughs> in and out of like wherever they were bringing it. Oh my god. Uh, so hold on, I got a cough now. Still recovering from cold I had like two weeks ago. I got a cough every five minutes or so. Uh, wasn't he one of the Gamergate fl fl flame fanners? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say he was part of that whole thing. But, you know, Gamergate shit aside, or any, any of his previous stuff aside, this is another one of those moments where I'm reading through this and I'm like, wow, I really dislike this gentleman. But he is right about a lot of this stuff. At least some of these assumptions. I hate that he... Well, I mean, first off, he starts it off with like... A fucking 4chan link. Well, hold on a second. I don't want to click on it. Oh, it's an int. Okay. He starts off with like a like a screenshot from 4chan. And it's like, wow, this is really starting off really well. Um, I want You want to work for Red 5 at a point? Yeah. <laughs> Dodge that one. <laughs> fucking kids. Oh, my God. Uh, and so he says, OG Blizzard culture used to be we are gamers right down to the receptionist. And we make games for ourselves because we are gamers. That is gone now. And devs at many AAA studios are distinctly, it's distinctly us versus them. The whiny entitled gamers. Now, again, I want to remind you that even though he has like in his profile something about, yeah, yes, I made Blizzard games. Yes, I still make games. Team lead of the original WoW producer in StarCraft, Diablo 2 and more. Um, you should note that was like a long time ago. <laughs> like, like he has no idea what the actual current culture is at Blizzard right now. Okay. But some of his points that he makes about how... Yeah, you see, he says, let's get back to the money. Once games were obvious money makers and everyone started to play them and a cool rep, uh, you started to attract a different type of developer. The first wave did it for free, made very little money, very little success just to make dreams happen. But once games were viewed as a stable and more glamour career choice with good pay, you started to attract the types of professionals who are very good at their job, but are definitely what I call nine to fivers. They treat it not as a passion, but as a routine job. Again, this wasn't helped by upper management, who by now is fully flooded with MBA marketing types who treat devs poorly and binge hire and fire them from project to project, treating them as tools. So we have seen this stuff happen, right? We have seen Blizzard do the hiring and firing and all that stuff. We know that we we know that there's nobody, there's very few people that remain that were part of like the original core, very passionate, you know, whatever group. Um, so we know that this is this, like what he's saying is definitely has some basis in fact and are decent assumptions to make, um, given their staff the good old pump and dump. <laughs> so then Zynga blew up big off Facebook and metrics were becoming important along with the predatory monetization. When mobile exploded, everything became free but with pay to win. The sheer scale of gaming profits leapt in order of magnitude or two forwards, billions, not millions. That's right. Zynga was as somebody who knows somebody who used to work for Zynga and got laid off um, during like, the, the big layoff that they did in like 2014 or something like that. Um, yeah, Zynga was massive. Like if you moved to San Francisco in games, you try to work for Zynga. It was just huge. Um, <clears throat> I see. Oh, yeah, I could see the 9 to 5 not passionate. Jeff's just churning that day. I'm a 9 to 5 not passionate worker churning right now. There you go. Game development should be a 9 to 5 at the AAA level. So, I mean... It says, when you design for monetization metrics, you get a very different type of game uh, than if you design for gameplay. These two are often at odds. You find yourself deliberately making your game worse or you, or uh, worse so it can sell better convenience items and power items. So he brings up a lot of good points about, you know, he says, then came the streamers. He's talking about, you know, he says, what sparked the exodus from WoW started with a player base that was tired of being treated as customers are often uh, treated in a monopoly. Taken for granted, poor service in terms of content, not being listened to, milk for cash and fees. Then came the streamers. Streamers are the world's biggest force in game marketing they can make you a success overnight with zero marketing like apex legends we all saw that happen uh or they can absolutely tear your game down many in traditional triple a game marketing never understood this and many still don't get it today when streamers were just getting started i was told by my ea and triple a staff staffed marketing team what a waste it was to do youtube and twitch even though it costs a fraction of ad spend uh it's apex who 
So that game still has a lot of players. Don't don't Apex who that shit. Uh yeah. <laughs> Jordan Reed, yeah, see, yeah, boy. Boy. <laughs> it says, of course they were wrong. And they now curry favor and spend money on Twitch and YouTube, but they don't really understand it. They spend money on it, but they don't really they don't actually watch the streams to understand when things are going wrong, or they don't believe it will affect them. So when Asma Gold starts dipping his toes into alternatives to WoW, interviewing Final Fantasy content creators and then finally playing it himself on stream, Blizzard was unaware, or unbelieving that this was happening. They were the monopoly. Even Asma Gold was taken by shock at the sheer number of viewers his Final Fantasy stream attacked attracted even he underestimated the number of dissatisfied and curious for alternative wow gamers well what happens in streaming once one content creator hits a gold vein of, of views others quickly hop on we know this we just talked about it about everybody jumping on that bandwagon right when's mike b gonna play final fantasy 14 again <laughs> and so this is what we're looking at right now like it's 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 we're looking at wow really taking a hit sure it's it's like 16 years old and it's like if if it's finally dethroned then then it had a good run right but i'm sure that the uh the developers and the people that work at wow like you know work for wow or blizzard uh they want to find a way to keep the dream alive uh is this for those of you guys who follow the lore and, the, and 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 follow the like the actual lore, not Josh aka lore, uh, follow the actual lore and the um and the content and everything, content release patches, all that good stuff. Um, it's been thrown around that, or maybe even in here, I'm not sure. Uh, but it's been thrown around that you know maybe retail can make some kind of rash decisions to uh restart the timeline or make some kind of change that like make massive overhaul change in order to reset the game and bring people in because classic is classic we're we, we're in tbc now a classic right and we're gonna get to the point to where there's gonna be not too much difference between retail and classic when classic is gonna be in mop Okay, so there's got to be some kind of you watching Loki. No, that's not what I meant, but it's yeah, probably uh, <laughs> there's got to be some kind of cutoff to where you say, all right, maybe, maybe retail needs a massive overhaul so that way classic can continue to be classic and keep those people you know involved in that ecosystem while also making World of Warcraft retail feel fresh. Um, it feels at this point that without the original devs and story writers, the lore seems like a parody or fan fiction version of itself, to me at least. You look at this stuff, and it's hard to see how Blizz uh, didn't see this coming, but like he said, uh, they just couldn't imagine the scenario actually happening. Mm -hmm. I feel like WoW has been lost story-wise for a bit, and it's trying to go over the top with it to get interest while losing quality. The video JC made about Final Fantasy versus WoW put it well. Well, good for JC. I'm here right now putting it for you right now, Inferno. Am I doing well? Am I doing good? I don't think we get to that point in Classic. You don't think we get to that point in Classic? <clears throat> Where you... Wait. I mean... <clears throat> they are... They're in, they're in Burning Crusade right now. I don't see them stopping... Before they hit Wrath, the biggest expansion of all time, they're going to get to Wrath. You're going to see classic servers running Wrath. Um, that's just a given. Um, <clears throat> Kata is the question. Yes, exactly. I agree with that, Serene. Kata is the question. I think a lot of people growing up... I'll read that one. Hold on a second. I think a lot of people growing up... Um, with WoW, have now have jobs, and they don't have the same time to spend on it, would rather spend it on other games. This is how I feel about it. Uh, every, well, that's so you're talking about people that are maybe leaving for other games. Are those people going to Final Fantasy 14? I haven't played, you know, since A Realm Reborn, so I don't know if I mean, as Inferno put it, it's more of an RPG MMO, not MMO RPG. To me, that says, oh, you can probably get in, play yourself, and be fulfilled with the uh, content that's available from a single player perspective. Um, basically, just rewriting the lore to make the story they want to tell now. Compared to Final Fantasy 14, they're setting up things for two to three expanses ahead. <clears throat> Um, I see classic stop at Wrath after Cata is too close to retail. Right, exactly. That's my point. Right, it's too close to retail. So then, what happens to 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 classic? How do they how do they refresh retail 
to make it feel like it's a completely different game. If you have enough people playing, if you have enough people playing classic, do you just keep resetting the servers and have them start over? Like, I mean, I'm, there's people that'll be down for that, you know, reroll classic. No, 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 you, you jest, but like there are people who would a hundred percent be down for that. Um, <clears throat> While suffers from executive oversight demanding player engagement and player playtime increases and it causes problems. When will Classic get so many updates that they need a Classic Classic? <laughs> There's no fulfillment in the game anymore. It's just about engaging players in the most tedious and annoying systems. See, it works for EQ because there are there, that's uh, their, what, 20-year-old MMO? They have, like, 20 years of exp uh, expansions. Dude, RAR, like, WoW is there, dude. Like, WoW has, like, 10 expansions or something. Eight, I don't even know how many expansions they have. Uh, and then countless, countless major uh, content uh, releases, like, in terms of, like, content patches. Um, like, they, they are totally there. Yeah, 17 years old, 16 years old, however old it is. Like, they, they c c could do it. But I like the discussion about, like, whether or not Wrath is where it stops. Because, yeah... Cataclysm is definitely like the next phase. Like you're crossing a threshold there that you cannot undo. And I joked about this in the past, right? I joked that, uh, God, I think it was maybe Legendary or maybe DigiHu or something like that. Uh, and it was after watching like uh, uh, one of the newer Star Trek movies or whatever about how they could uh, go to classic and then... Once they get to a certain point, diverge the timeline and then continue developing on classic, right? Just continue developing on classic uh, and turn that into like this branch timeline. Uh, and it was because if you watch in the Starcraft, Star Trek movies, uh, there was that point where they basically had the timeline reset so they could just make more movies and it doesn't necessarily follow the original uh, movie series. But um, <clears throat> but yeah, that was that that was just a guess. But now I feel like that's totally plausible, especially when you get to the point of like cataclysm, like I said. You know, uh, definitely going Loki on us here. Get the jet skis, <laughs> the Kelvin timeline. Is that what it's called? Um, this is legit a good idea. Well, thank you. I'll forget that I made that, 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 uh, <laughs> that, that I took that, made that guess. Um, so, so we will, uh, we will, uh, uh, well, just make new expansions after wrath for the classic search. That's right. Just make new expansions. Just keep it, keep it rolling. Why, why bother? Why bother destroying the world? Deathwing, uh, time travelers came back with uh, what's her face? The cute, the cute little gnome, <laughs> the cute little gnome. What's her name? Uh, uh, Clocky or something like that. Chromie. I was close. <laughs> you know, just how you time travel and shit. And then you know they'll just uh. We'll just like kill Deathwing in his sleep, you know? <laughs> so they'll do. Easy peasy. And then done. <sighs> Endless loop of engagement in systems because the same team with the new expansion for Classic are still in charge of retail. Yes. But they'll be making decisions based off of the perspective of Classic players. Uh,. And they're going to try, I feel like they would try really hard to, and I can't even say that there's the same people involved. There's too much stuff going on there. Uh, maybe at the high, high level, it's like, you know, a handful of people that are over, overseeing both projects, but this is, these are two very big projects. So I wouldn't be surprised if, um, if they have these diverging timelines or something that allow them to, uh, uh, you know, to, to basically be a little more free with this new one. And also maybe bring the game. I don't know what they would do. I mean, they want to make the games different, though. They have to make the games different because eventually their um, their numbers are gonna, you know, on one side is gonna dwindle enough that they're gonna want to put more development time into one or the other, uh, but maybe not necessarily maintain both. I mean, maintaining two games that's two that's two totally different games, <laughs> two totally different games. Um, <clears throat> so. They already show they don't listen to retail players, so I have zero faith to listen to classic players. No, I I I I, I hear you. I hear you. I understand. Hire and fire more developers, obviously. <laughs> it's, it's just 
This is the way. <laughs> this is the way. <sighs> Moving on. Guys. The Netflix of video games is here. <clears throat> and it is Netflix. Steam? No. <laughs> Netflix said it's going to add video game service on top of their uh, video streaming service. DOA already. Netflix added the first game like two years ago. Yes and no. They added, um, so they added, uh, they had a, a, a blood, fuck, uh, um, black mirror, no, broken mirror, uh, fuck. So they had a, they had a, a show, <laughs> black mirror, I think. <laughs> yeah, Bandersnatch. I was trying to think of the fucking name. I was like, Cumberbatch? Fuck. I was close. Um, and so Cumberbatch sees, thank you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Bandersnatch, which was an interactive movie. They also had... Uh, Minecraft, uh, uh, episode one, whatever, like Telltale games, um, that you could play through the Netflix, you know, whatever, uh, the Netflix interface. So they, they do have those, not necessarily like, um, actual, like streamable games in the sense that, you know, we see with, uh, um, on live or Stadia or anything like that. Um, your kid watches the Minecraft show const show constantly. Exactly. So never shows and games are on the same uh, on a Steam Deck when. So, 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 so. Uh, uh, it says, here, but now it sees Fortnite and other gaming obsessions as one of its main competitors for your finite attention. Talking about games, right? So they, they, they're they planning on adding it. Not necessarily adding to your, uh, not, not charging a premium for it or anything like that. Um, we know that uh, uh, they... Hired, they confirmed on Wednesday that it has hired a former Oculus, EA, and Zynga executive, Mark M Mike Verdu, as vice president of game development. So they they are serious in that they're bringing people in that actually know how to work with games, and and in some cases in very different platforms. Right? I mean, we're talking about we have EA, Zynga. And Oculus. These are three very different platforms that these things specialize in, right? <laughs> so this is somebody who has a bit of a a breadth of knowledge across different things. So they're they're serious about bringing these. See the article? Am I have a title places? Yeah, I'm gonna mention that real quick. Uh, so <clears throat> there is, there is this article here, and I want to tell you that it's a fucking stretch. It's a stretch. All right. So it says Netflix data mine could suggest a partnership with PlayStation. The data mine in question is that they found in the iOS app, they found a uh, Ghosts of Tsushima, uh, which is a um, uh, Sony Sony exclusive game. Uh, and then they found what looks like a, okay, looks like PlayStation controllers, PlayStation 5 controllers to be exact. Now, it feels like a stretch, kind of like a maybe but also these could just be generic controllers right could now if you have uh an xbox whatever uh you know that netflix works fine on there so if if it supports playstation games does that mean that you could play PlayStation games on your Xbox? It's It sounds to me like if there's any kind of partnership, it would be, uh, and they're not charging any extra, it would probably be you have to have a PlayStation Network uh, or PS Plus account, right? Like a paid account um, in order for this to work. Because there's no way that they're just going to come up with a deal where they're going to, where Netflix is going to take money out of their own monthly subscription in order to provide uh, a breadth of games to people. Maybe, but that's a huge loss leader and also destined to fail because th these streaming game services don't have a very good track record. So taking the risk of we're not going to charge our, our consumers, but we're going to pay out of our already existing income another company to provide us with games. That sounds like a massive risk. It's bound to be a separate, yeah, it's bound to be a separate sub. Has to be. You have in order to in order to play, if you have a PlayStation Plus 
whatever, then you can play PlayStation games on your uh, on your whatever device it is that you're playing Netflix games on. That would be a pretty good deal. Uh, game Pass Ultimate Sub gets you Netflix bundle in for free. It could be. Yeah, it could be. If, if Netflix can f find a way to make it so that they can sell the services of other platforms and simultaneously host their games, right? Like, if, like in exchange, host their games. That is a huge win for everybody involved, right? Um, X hours, uh, what, per week? The limited play free? I don't know. But it's, 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 that's, that could be, that could be a pretty winning deal. But let me tell you, like, the data mine just showed this and this, uh, and this. And this, which says end games, but there's a there's a solid background, so you can't see it. But it says end games. Um, can I view it out here? Let me see. Uh, nope, you can't see it. Okay, so we'll just know. it says end games. Um, so, whoops, lost it. No, 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 no. Yes, there we go. So yeah, it's it's a bit of a stretch, a bit of a stretch. Uh, I mean, how does this compete with like Xbox Game Pass? Xbox Game Pass is like one of the um it is like probably the most subscribed to game service uh it's the one that everybody uses <laughs> it's like the bits it's the best deal in video games for the most part um love all data mines consider news now always they've always been not now oh my gosh rar they've always are you kidding me are you kidding me all time <laughs> I bet Xbox is winning by a lot. You said nope. That's okay. You got facts, I'm sure. Um, Netflix message, do you still want to continue playing Fortnite? <laughs> exactly. So <clears throat> we'll 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 have to uh wait and see if there's any kind of of uh of link between the two. But right now, as it as it stands, there is a um uh there's definitely Netflix video games coming in the future. And surely, 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 certainly, it's going to be um, a winner. Unlike all the other ones. <laughs> Unlike all the other ones. <laughs> They're all still doing really well. <sighs> now, more now. Don't call me Shirley. Oh, fuck, I knew someone was going to say that. <laughs> Yo, I'm turning red. I'm turning red with anger. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm turning red because of all this red on the screen. Nintendo Switch has a new version. We were looking for that Pro. We didn't get it. But what did we get instead? We got a bigger screen, OLED, which means you can make it dimmer. So at night, for those of us who have LASIK, <laughs> and everything is so much brighter than it actually is, uh, yeah, you could play the, you could play your games at night. Isn't that fucking sweet? <laughs> So, <clears throat> October 8th, 2021, at a retail price, $349. What else does it add? Not much. Not much. It, well, it has a wide adjustable stand. <clears throat> if you have a Switch right now, you know that it's just, it's this tiny, it's this little, wee little, boop. It's, it's this big fucking thing. And it's, whoop, boop, the kick, a kickstand, right? <clears throat> so they've gone ahead and they've widened that up. So now, now when you just barely touch the switch, it doesn't fall the fuck over. So yay, that's kind of a win. Um, also, different angles and such. I think this one has different angles too. Built-in wired LAN port. Oh my god! Uh, Sixty-four gigabytes internal storage. Nobody cares because we all have SD cards in them. Enhanced audio. Nobody cares about that either. Three modes in one. Same shit as the current one. This is Joy-Con. What they're trying to say is this is the same Joy-Con. Probably. Probably. So, <clears throat> we don't know if they fixed the Joy-Con issue. We don't... Uh, in term, If you already own a... If you don't own a Switch, this is a great buy. If you don't own a Switch, this is a great buy. If you already own a Switch, this is... This is like the 3DS XL or something like that. Like, this is not even worth your... Uh, your money, in my opinion. You probably already have the wired adapter, USB wired adapter. You probably never use the stand. I never use the stand. <laughs> I, I, even if I had the wide stand, <clears throat> I would probably never use it. Uh, 64 gigabytes internal storage. Like I said, at this point, you probably have a fucking huge micro SD card in there. Why Why do you care if it's got 64 gigabytes internal storage? <clears throat> 
Switch Lite Life. Yeah, I mean, like, you, there's just no... I, I don't see a reason to buy this, personally. But if you don't own one, this might be the way to go. Like, I mean, of course, of course, don't maybe buy the old one if you want, uh, if you want uh, to buy it cheaper because it's perfectly fine. I mean, it's not going to get worse or anything. There is no improvement on uh, graphics capabilities other than the physical screen. Um, <clears throat> there's no actual like power, anything. Like in, in, increase in terms of like usage usability. What is the price difference? Uh, I think I think right now this regular switch is um, two ninety nine. I click right here. I'll tell you right now. Uh, I think it's two ninety. Yeah, two ninety nine MSRP. So yeah, two ninety nine for the regular switch. The switch light is two forty nine. Oh no, what's our one ninety nine? I, I swear it's two forty nine at some point. But yeah, one ninety nine. Um, we have a Nintendo Switch Lite, and let me tell you, like. If you can afford a regular Switch, just get a regular Switch. Uh, the Switch Lite is fine, but I dread the day when the Joy-Con starts drifting. So, and we don't even know if this one fixes it. We don't even know. It's straight up, it, it, it doesn't say this is Joy-Con 2. <laughs> so you can only assume that it's probably, it's probably gonna have the same problems. Probably. <clears throat> so we did not get our switch pro which makes me sad but we did kind of get a switch pro i'm sure you guys have all seen this already but let's take another look at it the steam deck not to be confused with the stream deck <clears throat> not to be confused the steam deck this is the big boy Switch Pro right here. This is the big boy, just, just there's a big boy stuff right here. The Cyber Deck. You wait till these are one dollar. <laughs> wait till these are one dollar on Steam again. Ah, uh, the Nvidia Shields. So this is this is the Steam Deck. They announced this yesterday, today? Question uh, <clears> mark. <throat> just to kind of go, let's we'll kind of scroll through. They have some videos here, like as actual video being played or games being played on uh, on this, the the device. Uh, all of the controls seem to huddle up towards the top pretty quickly. Uh, you can reserve it right now if you want. Uh, you should know that it has you know access to your Steam library and all that good shit. Uh, it, it's gonna function. Like a very powerful Steam Link, <clears throat> basically in your hands. Um, I loved, I loved my um, uh, Nvidia Shield portable, the little flip out screen thing. Uh, I thought that was the, the greatest thing ever. Uh, especially once I was able to get it to play my PlayStation games because uh, I had like a PS4 remote or whatever, and I was able to play those over my Wi-Fi. Uh, so I was able to play, I think I was playing Destiny or something like that or some other games. Uh, and so that was like, this is awesome. I could access all my other things. So uh, I, Steam Link works on <clears throat> an Apple TV, works on Android phones. It works on uh, your, your, your iOS phones so you can play your games on your phones as well. You can also sync your controllers to your phones. So you could do a lot of what this thing at its core can do. However... This thing also has its own built, it's got built in power that's going to let you play the games directly off of its own internal storage. So it is a standalone game uh, uh, console um, that's going to give you also remote access to other titles. So you have three options. You have, uh, and it says there is no in-game difference in frame rates or graphics quality between the three models. So you have 399 six, for 64 gigs, uh, 529 for 256 gigs, and 649 for 5 or 12 gigs. I actually have uh, an interview here with Gabe, uh, uh, who, <clears throat> where they talk a little bit about the uh, stream deck, st the stream deck, see, the Steam Deck pricing, um, and I actually want to play some of this for you guys. The three price points are um, 399, 529, and 649. And the only difference between those is uh, the amount of storage and the speed of the storage. So for, for us, it's really, how does the press react? You know, what are they saying about it? What are they saying about it a year later? Right? What's the perception? Uh, you know, what are gamers saying? Gabe looking like what are their off. reactions? What are our partners <laughs> saying? Are the kinds of things that are most helpful to us? Because our assumption is, you know, 
these are long-term decisions that we're making about how we can contribute to, to the health and the vitality of this ecosystem. And we're always going to be successful as long as, that, as that's continuing to happen. So let's fast forward a little bit here. Experience uh, was the, the biggest and most fundamental. Here we go. Uh, was secondary and and painful. So he's talking uh, he's, he's, he's about, you know, he says he wants it first to be a system you could pick up and just play. And then second, they looked at the price point. So he says the price point is what was the most painful part because, <clears throat> because you want to make it accessible, but you also need to make it, you know, not cost you an arm and a leg per unit that you're selling. Um, this is only a three minute video. It's going to be included in the article in the show notes. So you should, you should watch it. It's, it's a quick, it's quick, easy watch. Uh, Gabe clearly like, you know, he's, he's trying to, He's trying to make this thing work. Um, even uh, uh, Tim Sweeney, uh, CEO of Epic, he even said on like, I mean, Twitter on an interview or something like that that um, this is a a great move for uh, you for uh, for Steam. Um, <clears throat> now somebody did fire off an email to Gabe. Gabe has been known to respond to emails. You could actually just email. <clears throat> email Gabe and he'll respond to you and I'll, 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 quite often. And he says, um, so somebody asked him, is the M dot is the M2 SSD slot present in the base 399 version? Uh, and he says, yes. So it's very possible, depending on how hard it is to take this thing apart, that you could buy the base model and then slap in your own expansion because the hardware is going to be there. That makes perfect sense. You can make this assumption without even getting confirmation. They're not going to make the physical hardware different for the cheaper model. They're just going to going to omit something out of it so that way when they do add it, you can make more money off because it would cost too much to make two different versions, one that support that and the other one to support another kind of uh interface. Um <clears throat> So just get the cheapest and upgrade the storage. Solder chips are not a huge deal. Uh, that would end up being terribly cheaper just to void your warranty. Uh, you don't get the anti-glare glass, right? Uh, I'm not sure about that. Is that on the other page? Let me, we'll see. Uh, but I may just need a firmware flash to enable it. Just, just larger drive in the same slot. Yeah, I mean, it's it's possible. We know that Steam has been pretty friendly with people that want to go through and fuck with their hardware, right? We've we've seen them let you do that shit before, right? Uh, they've been down with that. They have some developers that are still cool with that. Uh, <clears throat> the anti-glare is only a top model. Well, let me tell you, you you will be able to buy an anti-glare piece of glass that will go over top of your uh, over top of your your screen. So you don't have to worry about that part. Um, I actually have it on like my tablet. I have it on every other device that I own because you slap it on easy peasy. Um, but will it stop bullets like Elon? God, what is Elon? Is that the glass that that uh, that Elon Musk put on his uh, cyber truck that he smashed with a rock? <laughs> is, that what, is that what it is? I don't know. Actually, I really don't know. Uh, but yeah. So if you are if you're someone that's a uh, oh transparent oh wow. <laughs> So yeah, if you're somebody that uh, you're, if you if you have not bought a Switch and you can afford it and you have the technical know-how, you can you can take this base model 399 64 gigabyte <clears throat> um, Steam Deck. I have to check myself every time I say it now, uh, and then go through and upgrade it with whatever you want in terms of uh, storage. We'll see. Someone's going to do a teardown. We'll know about it sooner or later. Like, sooner rather than later, for sure. Uh, now, there are... Some of you guys who have already um, uh, pre-ordered, what is your what is your pre-order date look like? I, I, I saw... I saw Tanner's. I saw quarter two, 2022. Is that, is that right? Like, I know that some of these dates are pretty far off. Lack, quarter one, 2022. Dang, really, Lack? You got one, too? Man, <clears throat> I should get this. I should pre-order it just so I can cancel it later. Hmm, should probably do that. Um, but this is, I mean, it looks rad, though. It looks The integration looks pretty rad. Uh, I just hope that whoever is working on this OS is not the same guys who do the app for the phone because the app, not the Steam Link app, but the fucking Steam app is just the worst. The worst. All right, quarter two, 2022. <clears throat> Uh, I ordered it for my uh, for my friend. Oh, there you go. Website shows the date at the add to cart page. You didn't check mine. See, uh, you don't get a date on your purchase. Um, 
A Steam card? I will want to mod it into a drawing tablet. I suppose you could try. Does it have a touch screen? <laughs> I didn't even look. Does it actually have a touch screen? It probably does. I'm sure it does. Oh, does it have a touch screen? Hold on. Touch. It's funny. It's like, no, it just doesn't say here. I don't think it has a touch screen. Are you sure? It doesn't say on this, on this page anywhere. Touch. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, man. Like, it doesn't say anywhere. You don't see any of these videos. I'm not touching the screens or anything. It has touch screen. I'll promise you it does. Well, here. Here's how we could check. Let's do this. Let's do this. I have, I have the, we'll take a look at the tech specs here. Let me see. <clears throat> oh, it's right there. Touch screen. Oh, God. I should have read the tech specs. Let's take a look at this, though. So, you have it here. Boom, boom. A couple of touch pads. We know that they love their touch pads. Their touch pads are actually really fucking cool. Um, if you, if you've ever used a Steam controller, it feels really, really good. Um, <clears throat> also, they have, um, uh, they have four buttons on the back on either side. So you have your L1, L2, R1, R2, and then you have uh, L, L4. Okay, I guess there's L3 somewhere. I'm not, sure, not even sure where that's at. <laughs> Where's L3? L1, L2, uh, and then it goes to four and five. Well, where, wait, 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 where is... Oh, L3. Oh, it's right. The push. I forgot the push sticks. I forgot those count. Um, but yes, and so it goes right to. Uh, uh, so yeah, you have you have two more buttons on the back. This is a lot. This is a lot of touch potential. Um, let me see. Do I have my? Yeah. Hold on a second. This is a lot of touch potential. I like that. So, I I have I have a bunch of I have a couple of Steam controllers actually, uh, and so. They are. They have their left this, and then they have these buttons down here. Uh, we know the Pro controller, Pro Xbox controller, also has like a couple extra buttons. I think the PS5 controller also has a couple extra buttons as well, as well as the touch, touch thingy, right, or something like that. Um, so you know, we we joke about how they can't possibly add more buttons to these things, but they'll find ways. <laughs> they'll find ways. It'll happen. There'll be, I don't know what these other extra buttons on the back are going to be for, like when you're playing games, maybe for like some spell selection or something or group selection, I'm guessing like spell sets, swapping or uh, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> Modifiers for other things. Uh, Steam's controller. What is this? Uh, dear guy, please let that turn that turn offable. Uh, the amount of times I hit touch controls by mistake. Yeah, so stay out. So like Jordan says, uh, Steam controller's configuration, configuration UI lets you do whatever you want. This is why I'm like pretty confident that you're going to be able to do a lot with this um uh, with the uh the steam link steam deck uh is because they already give you so much control over their existing hardware um that i'm sure you'll be able to do whatever the fuck you want that's kind of that's one of the nice things about about steam is that they typically try to cater to the way the cater to players the way they want to play games um what i love about what i also love about this just fyi and if you didn't know uh is that you can also download profiles that other people have made so if you're playing a game and maybe maybe uh you want to play it with your steam controller or something like that other somebody else probably already made a um a controller profile for it you can just download it and then just boom just play it so steam controller is definitely like my second favorite controller <laughs> it's xbox 360 yes i'm still on a 360 and then steam link i'm sure sorry steam fucking controller these fucking names <sighs> boy i can't wait for this to never be available in my country oh <laughs> that's sad sad amd gpu by the way apu uh gpu is a eight rdna two cus whatever the fuck that means so uh the text the tech specs will be available uh they're actually available on their site as well the same site that uh, the same uh, list that i showed you here um the resolution is 1280 by 800 which is why i'm certain it's going to be able to play any game just fine because 1280 by 800 is a very small resolution uh however it's a 16 by 10 ratio so it might be a bit funky for some people. I don't know. Um, RDNA 2, newer than what is on Xbox slash PlayStation. Ooh, next generation. So, <clears throat> speaking of the Steam Deck, speaking of the Steam slash Stream Deck, we do have a new Stream Deck launched the same day. <laughs> we want. I want to go over some of this, some of the... Um, new releases that they have for uh 
through the Elgato. The Elgato had a uh, had a uh, a demonstration yesterday, a keynote or whatever presentation, and they went over some of the uh, the new pieces of gear that are releasing, as well as yeah, we're going to talk about all that. The three the three pieces we're going to talk about today is the Wave XLR, the Face Cam, and of course the Stream Deck. Uh, so the Stream Deck it got a little bit of overhaul. Uh, I would say just like the uh, Swoled, aka the Switch OLED edition. Um, this is good for somebody who maybe already has, uh, or who has not yet gotten involved in the, uh, the Elgato Steam Deck, Stream Deck, um, uh, ecosystem. Uh, but if you already have a Stream Deck, don't even bother. Everything that I see on this page is like, why, what is offer that I don't already have available to me. Yes, you could push buttons and they're colorful and they're nice and everything. Maybe they, I don't know, maybe maybe they're a little bit more animated or a great, nicer screen or whatever. Um, they'd added the ability to change face plates. So you can actually buy face plates for $9.99 each. I'm sure somebody will 3D print them or something. Uh, you got a Loop Deck a couple weeks ago. It has potential to be miles better than a Stream Deck if they improve the software. I knew that was going to be the problem. I was looking at Loop Deck too and I knew it was going to be a software thing. Um, so create with ease. So again, this is just more, all this is software. All this is software and, and all this stuff like this store, this store is available right now for original stream deck owners. Um, so there's, there's really not a lot here that they're offering. And then we're down at the bottom already. Uh, there's not a lot here that they're offering, uh, for the Mark two that would make a Mark one owner want to upgrade, right? Not that that's terrible. It's ter like, not as bad or anything. You know, if anything, it's going to make the, the, the Mark 1s, you know, cheaper for those of you guys who buy them used, which is fine. They're very durable. Um, it's just something to, to keep in mind. If you already own one, don't think that you're being left in the dust. No, I'm face plates, dude. You could probably, I bet I could go to Etsy. I bet I go to Etsy. Etsy. Etsy right now. Here we go. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Stream Deck. Um, let's see. Stream Deck cover. There we go. Uh, stream Deck. Look at this. Custom Stream Deck cover. Boy, look at this. See? <laughs> so like I said, there's no reason to uh, to step up to, to, to a Mark II if you already have a, uh, if you already have a Mark I. Tusk Indie Gaming. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So they also announced the just 3D print. Agato brand is very Oh, God. They also added the Wave XLR, which is their answer to the Go XLR. Uh, it has a price point of $159. It also has one knob. <laughs> it's a very flexible knob, but it's just one knob. Uh, now, this is the... Um, this is an XLR supporting microphone. So microphones kind of like this one here. So if you guys are looking at getting the wave XLR, because maybe it's difficult to find and get your hands on a, uh, go XLR, which I understand they're very hard to find. Um, then, uh, I would suggest getting, getting this mic specifically. It's a Rode NT one a, it's very old. This specific, this exact mic here that I have right here, this one right here is 20 years old. Uh, and it still sounds great. Right. So it sounds great. Uh, so yeah, if you buy it once, it's like $200 and it'll last you forever. And then you can hook it up to this bitch. And then there you go. You're good. I, I have all the faith in the world that this thing at a hundred and what out of $59, $159 price point is probably going to do the job. It's probably not gonna have all the features that you're going to find from a $500 go XLR or even the mini, but it's going to do the job for you. Um, it has software that they're 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 putting into it, or they're they're putting into it. That they're they're supporting for it. Oh, you also get face plates, of course. Just oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Uh, the software looks pretty good. Kind of reminds me of uh, Voice Meter. If you ever use Voice Meter, I know some of you guys are streamers. So you guys probably have. Uh, the software looks pretty nice. Just uh, visually looks good. They have clip guard. Sure, yeah, they want a clip or anything like that. Here it is, the software. Um, so yeah, it looks simple. Allow you to mix a lot of different things. Um, the Wave XLR software honestly looks better. Well, I mean, it, it's, I mean, it's whatever your needs are, you know, like this might be good enough if you're just, uh, you know, streaming on a single PC or whatever. Um, that's also, I would say that's actually one of the uh, limitations here. Uh, if I look at the hardware, let's go back and look at the hardware on the back. Um, yeah. So the hardware on the back shows that there's an input and a USB output. So, um, you're probably going to be a little limited on signal flow. That's all. 
So you won't be able to necessarily take a signal and then, like I have right now, I have an auxiliary output of my Go XLR uh, that goes into another separate mixer that now splits it into four different streams. One for you guys, one for the speakers here, one for those speakers over there, and one for my headphones. So that's that could be something that could be a blocker for some of you. With NDI, you can still single PC just fine with it. I mean, it's, it's, like, like I said, different people, different needs. Like, I'm just letting you know that there's going to be limitations of things you could do. Uh, I'm someone that needs to hear everything that I say. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, that might not be something that's necessarily possible with that device. The 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 Wave 3 uh, does have a, a monitoring setup where you can hear yourself or whatever from what I've read. Um, but we're not talking about that one today. So <clears throat> lastly is the face cam. Now the face cam, I'm reading the comments on um, uh, on their Twitter, uh, and people are just saying, "Oh, well, it's it's an extra hundred dollars." I need to hear my voice at all times. I can hear it right now. It sounds good. <laughs> no, I do need to hear it though. It's just know I'm talking for some reason. Uh, <clears throat> so face cam. is a yeah the gucci brand of electronics yeah so that's what people are saying it's like well it's just a webcam so of course they're gonna slap elgato on it and then it's gonna sell for x hundred dollars now <clears throat> orange noodles i think you've dialed the wrong number <laughs> what <clears throat> what on earth Okay. <clears throat> Anyways, so uh, I went through, I went through, and um, you know, went through this thing here. And uh, one thing I noticed, if we scroll down, so first off, it says uh, eight elements, all glass, with a with a f two point four aperture and a focal length of twenty four mi uh, millimeters, because superb video requires studio quality optics. Just so you get an idea of what that is, this this camera that I use right now is a and it's a full frame equivalent they're saying full frame equivalent 24 millimeter this is a 28 millimeter lens 24 millimeters four millimeter four, four millimeters may not sound like a lot but the wider you get like the, like the smaller the number you get the more each millimeter matters so you're gonna see probably a bit more just not too much but you're gonna see a bit more than what you already see here now in terms of aperture the aperture that i'm using here is f 2.4 so you're going to get the same depth of field quality on this uh, face cam. So that is a, that's pretty good, right? If you could get this rough, roughly, I say roughly, because again, the wider, the wider the lens, the broader that aperture is, the, the focus is, okay? So when I'm out of focus here and I'm out of focus here, it might be a little bit different for this one because it's a wider lens. Now, that being said, the specs sound pretty good. The specs sound pretty good. Death of Field is what they were really pushing on their stream. Yeah, the specs sound pretty good. Um, now, the device does do all the processing on board. So that's one of, one of the benefits of this is that it's not a webcam that's doing the decoding on the, uh, on the PC. It's doing the decoding in the camera. So it's basically sending a raw feed of video. That's rad. Like, that's really rad. Uh, because, one, it's processing power that you don't have to worry about devoting to this device. Um, and two, you could save the settings for it on the device itself. So you could get the same quality no matter where you plug it in or whatever. Um, <clears throat> and you just plug it in. It just handles everything itself. Um, something else that's really nice is this right here. Optimized for indoor use, Sony Starvis CMOS sensors enables face cam to capture extraordinary detail and noise. Starvis, star visibility is what that stands for. Starvis is Sony's uh, night vision, basically, <laughs> uh, uh, chip sensor. Uh, it's primarily developed for security cameras so they could see at night, right? So. This is the same technology that they are using for this. So when you think security camera footage, you think, wow, that looks like shit, All right? But this is like the newest, latest in security camera technology that they're putting in this thing. And the reason why they're going with this, I'm just guessing, but the reason why they're going for this is because 
they know in these lighting situations, right, in a studio like this, that they need to have something that can raise the gain on your video so that way it's visible like this without necessarily adding a shitload of noise. And so that's why they have a fat chip sensor on there that's designed to work at night so that way they can do that. Because if they didn't do it, then it would be just like every other webcam out there and the lights that they offer, the Elgato lights that they offer, are not that bright. They're not much brighter than the lights I have. They're actually not brighter than the lights I have in here right now. So, when you look at, let me see, this webcam, for example, right? So this webcam, <clears throat> there we go. This webcam is trying desperately to squeeze more light into the sensor, right? Because it is not designed to work in this low light scenario. And that's why you see the shutters like open and that's why it looks like this, looks like shit. This is not something that you should, you should not have a problem with that. <laughs> with this camera, with, uh, with the uh, face cam. I would still wait. I would still wait until, you know, we get an actual uh, review on it. But personally, me personally, this looks like a pretty good buy. $199 seems steep, but if it can actually deliver on all these points and they do have the right hardware for it and they do do the processing on the fucking chip and they do save the settings here and just one USB-C cable that plugs in your fucking PC and that's it. And also has a tripod mount and all that stuff. It sounds to me like it's something that could be a pretty good uh, DSLR replacement if you don't, or, or if you don't have DSLR. Um... You see, Dell UltraSharp webcam. This also used Sony Starvis sensor. Sensor. There you go. Alpha Gaming has a really good review of this camera. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, good. Yeah, check it out. Check. I mean, I would check out any reviews, especially if it's uh, uh, not a sponsored one. <laughs> yeah, you wait for you to buy it and review it, dude. Like I, I, like I tempted. I'm so tempted. I, I just bought a gimbal. I just bought a nice gimbal. So like, I'm kind. I'm tapped. But like, I mean, look at these settings and all of them save. Like to me, this looks like it is potentially be a really good device, um, uh, webcam. Now you're saying, you're saying that the Dell UltraSharp webcam might be a little bit better because of what? Because the lens on the Dell one may be better. Yeah. All we know about the glass on this is that it is, it is an Elgato one. It's an Elgato, uh, um, uh, glass prime lens they call it uh but it does have a quarter inch thread they don't show it uh but it does have a quarter inch thread so you can't does it show it i guess not uh so you can actually screw this thing into you know uh, i mean actually a lot of webcams have that that's how this camera is mounted actually this webcam is mounted through the uh through the quarter inch on the bottom so it's not it's not unusual to have um is he so when is it going to be sold out with people buying them for zoom meetings i mean you have the best you'll have the best uh, Dell says Sony Starvis CMOS 8.3 megapixels. Is this the, uh, let's see, let me take a look at this again real quick. Um, yeah, yeah, same thing. So Sony CMOS, uh, probably the exact same sensor. It probably is the exact same sensor. Probably is. Uh, you can email them, ask for a free one for Steam, for Steam YouTube review. Probably. Um, <laughs> that'd be nice. They have a lot of partners though, so I don't know. They've already denied me partnership, so that was a long time ago. Um, but what I will say, just comparing this to the Dell, uh, does the Dell have the onboard settings and all that? Does the Dell handle all the processing on the web webcam itself, or does it shuttle it through uh, to be compressed uh, on the PC? That's 4K support. I think, Elgato's, yeah, Elgato's only 1080p. That's right. Yes, it should be noted that the Elgato is only 1080p. So while we only stream in 1080p, so it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal, uh, it is. Taking a 4K stream and scaling it down. You guys are all fucking gamers. You guys know this. <laughs> Taking a 4K screen stream and scaling it down is going to look better than a 1080p stream. Hands down. Every single time. <gasps> My jackets! Shut up. <laughs> I know how pixels work. <laughs> you start bending all those things down. Uh... Let's see, unless you work for a campsite, you don't need 4K. God, even if you work for a campsite, please. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's price point wise, like it seem it seems like it could if it could deliver on all these things and have like this quality video. Like 
it's to me, to me, reading this, it's like it should be really damn close to this quality video here. And if I could get that in that size, whatever the fuck that is, right? Like this size, that sounds awesome to me. That sounds like a, a travel with it. Easy. Um, <clears throat> Agato doesn't compress the video, so it won't degrade. Mm hmm. Uh, Dell using all the big words. Advanced digital overlap, video noise reduction, temporal noise reduction, blah, 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 blah. They were streaming on them. To be honest, it looked really good. Yeah, the, uh, some of the demo videos I've seen of it, it looks really good. Uh, you don't know until you get it in, you know? Like, you don't, it's hard, it's hard to gauge cameras because when it looks, oh, wow, it looks cool, man. Like, the blacks are really deep and the, the highlights look really good and all that stuff. And then you get on site and you're just like, wow, this room is very, very bright. Way brighter than anything that's natural. <laughs> So of course it's gonna look crisp because there's plenty of of light to work with. Um, so the Dell's 4K, but only at, only at 30 FPS. What? You D DM me the uh, uh, Discord the Dell lens explosion. Oh God! <laughs> let me let me pop it open real quick. Oh, okay. That's not really gonna tell us too much. <laughs> <laughs> you have too much about pixels. Maybe I'll show you all stuff about the uh, about the Earth on the Discord. Plug Patreon. There you go. After the show today, you should <laughs> check out the Alpha Gaming review. He does the side by side shots with Elgato camera and his nice cameras. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds good. I have to check that out. So, what time is it? There is more. I've, and this has been covered to death, which is why we're, we're, we're doing it at the end. There is, there's one more thing. So FaZe Clan just can't seem to stop messing with kids. They just can't. They just, have, they just, they just can't seem to stop messing with kids, man. <sighs> F-A-Z-E. Previously, we talked about... I think it was Jarvis, FaZe Jarvis. Got he basically cheated on stream. He had like cheats running or something on stream. And he got banned from uh he got banned from Fortnite. Still is part of the uh, a part of FaZe clan. And now we have a new and this goes a lot deeper than what I'm gonna show. I'm giving you guys like the just this is gonna be just the high level shit. And then I'm gonna drop you links so you could go and watch the deeper shit. Okay, I watched like two hours worth of other people do it, other people's work, and I'm trying desperately to break this down on something simple and bite size uh, because it's deep. So first off, you need to understand what pumping and dumping is. Pumping and dumping in the crypto world uh, is where you create a currency and then or take part in the creation of a currency. So that way you can get from the original dispenser uh, currency in large quantities. And then you turn around and you pump, you pump up the hype surrounding that currency so that other people will buy in. And then when they buy in and, and enough people buy in, you dump. Because what happens is if I start off with 10,000, BFF coin, right? And I tell you guys, yo, BFF coin, it's going to be the shit. It's going to be shit. You, I'm, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm buying in right now. Let's do it. And I have 10,000. And you guys start little bits here and there, maybe $10, maybe $20, whatever. Whatever you're buying, you're, you're raising the value of that coin. And if you have a large enough fan base, you can raise that value stupid amounts, stu exponentially. And then once it gets to a certain point, then you sell your initial investment. And then what happens is the price of the coin ends up tanking. <laughs> Bitcoin next! <laughs> Show up and take my money! Selling my AMC! I'm in BFF coins now to the moon! That's right! <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so... That's what happened with a couple of members of FaZe Clan, including FaZe Jarvis, who, like, I, I cannot stay out of trouble. This kid cannot stay out of trouble. 
<laughs> so <clears throat> that sounds rather illegal. I mean, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I'm sure it could just not be illegal yet. Uh, so a look into a failed influencer deal to promote a cryptocurrency. So this goes on. There's a lot here. I don't even sure if I'm going to do a good job of, of summarizing it, but what effectively happened is a couple members of phase clan decided to create this currency or create sorry create a charitable currency called save the kids okay uh you could find it uh, on the on the on the market for i think it's like a dollar sign kids right um and they got together with a bunch of people to uh, a bunch of other content creators uh, like Rice Gum and uh, I think maybe uh, obviously the Phase Kids, <laughs> kids, <laughs> uh, and they got together. They made a video for it and everything. They're like, "I believe, in, I believe in save the kids. Your charity, your donations are gonna help charity and all this stuff and all this shit, whatever, 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 whatever." Um, and so they uh, they pimped this thing as a save the kids initiative it's a charitable coin you're going to do a lot of good in doing this and then they end up well at least one of them ends up dumping his coin now one thing to keep in mind with this this is not like your private bank account right this is not like your private bank account where you could just you know sell or you can buy or whatever like throw money around and no one's going to have access to it because it's private Anything that's done on the blockchain is done is done with publicly accessible wallet addresses. You just have to know which wallet address belongs to whom. And so there's a couple of individuals, uh, some ordinary gamers and Coffeezilla, who went and dug through tons of deleted tweets through the archives to find tons of deleted tweets, pimping coins, and then and then f these giveaways, right? Found the addresses. I'm at, I think I actually have a timestamp right here. Hold on a second. This is coffee. I notice a pattern of giveaways with some of these guys. They'll say something like, this is the craziest thing I've ever done. I will double your safe galaxy wallet. This tweet has now been deleted, but I pulled it up in the archives. And then they pick some winners. You won. Just confirming this is the right address. Maybe you see where this is going. Let's go. Here's my wallet. <clears throat> so, in case it's not explained here in a second, this hash is this person's wallet address, okay? Wallet address, this is all we need. <clears throat> hey, Using this wallet, it. we simply cross-check it at the time of giveaway, see that they got the winnings, and then check who sent it. We then check if that address has saved the kids' tokens and other tokens that these people have promoted in the past. If it's actually Phase K's wallet, it should have both Safe Galaxy, which he's promoting here, and Save the Kids' Tokens, which he also promotes. And it does. Here's the Save the Kids tokens. And here's the Save Galaxy tokens, which incidentally, he got from the Save Galaxy deployer, meaning he's not just some random person. He's clearly someone with influence. That's how these tokens do it. They give free tokens to the influencers from the deployer wallet. That's all there is to it. Ladies and gentlemen. So, <clears throat> he goes on. This is a 37-minute video, okay? And it's really good. There's a second video that's like an hour and a half long. Uh, and what he does, what they do is they go through, they goes through all of these different uh, the addresses and he will pull up the, um, where they're sending the coins to. And he's discovering that phase, jar, phase K, who is now just K, um, did indeed dump his coin the second it started to skyrocket. So he ended up ditching it. Phase Jarvis did not ditch his coin. So <clears throat> phase, so this video comes out. This was July 1st. This video comes out uh, detailing and showing without a doubt, without a doubt that phase K did indeed pump and dump, and dump. Like there's no question whatsoever. And later that afternoon, there was... Or roughly around the same time, actually. It says a statement from FaZe Clan, and it says, We have made a decision to remove K from FaZe Clan and have, sus and have suspended Jarvis, Nikon, and, uh, and Tico until further notice. FaZe Clan have had absolutely no involvement with our members' activity in the cryptocurrency space, and we strongly condemned their recent behavior. The trust and respect of our fans has been and always will be our number one priority. So if we look at 
this other article here, this is July 1st, 2021, this actually details a bit it, it, that FaZe Banks, who is the owner of FaZe, FaZe Clan, uh, indeed also did basically the same fucking things as giving away $10,000 to one lucky person that re retweets, likes, and follows Bank Social. This is a project I fuck with heavily and truly believe this is the next one to pop. $10,000 winner chosen at random. Not financial advice. LOL. And so... Again, you know, he says right here, like, here's somebody basically uh, who has the receipt, says, I have an idea. Let's pump and dump a, a coin that is worth 0 0.000001. 000 I will buy $20,000, 20000 is worth, and tell my fans to buy uh, buy it so the price shoots up so we can make $10,000 in 20 minutes. Oh, and I'm not a financial advisor, so if you guys get screwed, it's not my fault. Damn, Banks, what the fuck? And he having us right here. He's, he says, are you fucking kidding me? I've made $10,000 in the last... 20 minutes this is where bank banks posted this on his uh on his instagram story so yes then there's this dink doink bullshit that's happening today as matter or, or yesterday whatever like recently like these these shit coins right don't fuck with these you know like don't don't i mean i feel like most people here are pretty smart but i know some of you probably aren't so i'm trying to look out for your best interests okay do not fuck with anything other than Doge. Okay, maybe don't fuck with that either. But, <laughs> yeah, Doge to the moon. That's right, baby. That's right. No, we're going to make it. But no, listen. Like, they let go of K. Jarvis, uh, Tico, and, and Nikon, or whatever. Nikon and Canon. They're, <laughs> they're, on, they're on leave indefinitely. Uh, and so, like... But it looks like at the top, like this is something that he has also done himself, that Banks has done himself. Uh, so th there's a lot of evidence here. There's a huge trail. Um, we also have a we have a cease and desist that was set to Coffeezilla from former former FaZe Clan guy from K, uh, basically saying that he has to pull that the YouTubers have to pull their videos and all that. <sighs> This is a thank you, Mike. I lived under a rock for so long. I had no idea about data mining and now this. <laughs> Where would I be without you today? <laughs> I got you. I got you, Rar. <laughs> so they sent they they sent out cease and desist. And you know what they did? You know what Coffeezilla did? He he read the cease and desist out on a fucking in a video and made a fucking million views doing it. <laughs> Good old so, fucking so here's another video here. This one, this. Uh, this one, I've I've seen basically the whole thing, and he also goes into extreme depth, just uh, just just revealing all of this, all of these um, wallets and how they're all linked together, and just basically it's just deeper than than, than anyone could have thought. He even goes through and he shows he shows that there's two sites. There's the Save the Kids and there's Save the Children, and they basically look the same, even down to the logo. Even the damn logo looks basically the same. Um, so clearly they built this thing. And he, he makes the assumption here. He's like, he's like, it seems like they built it with the intention of making it look legit by copying another site with basically the same fucking name. <laughs> Save the younglings. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, some really, really, really good videos. Goes really in depth on that. Uh, as you as as you expect, we have an apology video. I know I haven't posted in a while, and there is so much that I want to say about what's happened in the past month. But because of legal reasons, all I'm allowed to say right now is this: Please please do not believe what you're hearing online all of these people making videos think that they know the truth and that they know who's responsible when they just don't so this is the truth all right i lost money on save the kids token but what actually upsets me uh, i'm not gonna say whether he lost money overall but he definitely sold he definitely got re a lot of coin <laughs> Definitely dumped a lot of coin. Is does he sound like he's crying, dude? This is this is the way that look. Here's you, maybe you guys forgot about this one, but Phase Jarvis also uh, had this is Phase K. Phase Jarvis also had his apology video. There's a uniform for this, all right? And it's it's white shirts, plain white backgrounds, and like teary eyes. Okay, look. Okay, I'm making this video today for the whole of the. See? 
it's like crazy like it's, just waking it's, up it's 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 like it's like a thing look at it's just it's just, it's just, it's just, <laughs> it's just look man this one worked really well so what you gotta do what you gotta do get a white shirt <laughs> get a plain white background get really teary-eyed <laughs> Same PR team. <laughs> Some fucking same fucking thing. Maybe some little disheveled hair or something. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> it could always be the same fucking room, man. If it wasn't for the wall. Uh they're doing the same thing as copying the website, just copying video, just cop just copying their yeah, exactly. Just uh so this is this is actually ongoing, right? <clears throat> this is actually ongoing uh, because there are uh, <laughs> there are ramifications to running a scam like this if somebody were to alert the right people, right? Whether or not it's Elizabeth Warren or whoever you want your superhero heroine to be, right? It's wh whoever it is. Whoever it is, the right person getting their hands on something like this could make some pretty serious waves in terms of regulations. Typically, regulations are born of scams like, like this, right? Where the small guy does a biggish thing and then regulations come in, right? New regulation is written. When the big guys do it, it's a little bit different. When the big guy does it, it's a little bit different, but... Fucking scammers gotta ruin everything. That's right. Maybe there's a PR company that gives people scripts. Are you a YouTube streamer? Have you defrauded children or sexually assaulted somebody? Call us now. Regulations are born when politicians lose money. That's correct. Yeah, so this this is a bad thing, uh, potentially bad thing for everyone, you know, because uh all it takes is for a government to step in and be like, wow, these guys ran a fake children's charity in order to in order to scam money out of their followers using crypto. Maybe we should put some kind of regulation on this crypto. And that's when shit will hurt. That's when shit will hurt. Uh, you say crypto is uh, Secretary Yellen's radar. We don't want it to be. We don't want it to be. But, you know, people are going to scam. And when people get scammed, guess what? One of the... These are popular fucking people, man. You're talking... You're talking FaZe Clan, which is huge, Right? And then you have Rice Gum, who is also huge in his own area. Adam Ross, massive. Okay? These are all very popular fucking streamers with kids. Right? Not, they don't have kids. But like, you know, with a certain demographic that's much younger than them or whatever. Uh, and so all it takes is for some dumbass kid with a politician, politician parent to go and lose a shitload of money. And then, mom, dad. <laughs> so I lost all the money on this scam and blah, 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 blah. And that's all it fucking takes. All it fucking takes. <sighs> when small guys do it, you get regulations. Big guys do it, they get they get initiate a bailout. Yep, they step in to regulate. I lost the yacht fund. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The trust fund is gone now. Last up, this is actually a pretty funny story. Last up, have you ever, have you ever gotten into an argument with somebody on the internet? The answer is yes, you have. But you were so mad, you were so mad that you were like, I'm going to divulge state and state and government secrets just just to get, just to fucking chill this guy, what's up? Huh? Have you? Have you? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. But this guy did. This guy was so upset that he felt that a tank in War Thunder <laughs> didn't quite represent the actual tank in real life that he posted... He posted classified information about the tank to the for, to the War Thunder th forums that was then verified. <laughs> it says here, 
It says here, we have written, this is from the moderator of the forums. We have written confirmation from the Ministry of Defense that this document remains classified. By continuing to disseminate it, you are in violation of the Official Secrets Act as stated by the warning on the cover of the documents. <laughs> And it says an offense that could carry up to a 14 year prison sentence if prosecuted. <laughs> Big chicken dinner, buggy, buddy. What the fuck? So, what's the document? Let's read it together. It's gone. It's obviously gone. <laughs> it's obviously gone. So, he was so mad that he decided to go ahead and post this. Uh, he says, as I've stated a few a, a few times now, the complexity of the construction is sometimes difficult to see uh, see or show without with with pictures. Uh, it's so complex that the Challenger 2's case, I, I don't completely blame Gaijin for getting uh, it incorrect. All I try to do is point out the areas where they're incorrect. So for him, in order to make the game better, he thought, you know what? I think it's cool if these guys, <laughs> Gaijin Entertainment, can. Uh... <laughs> Uh, I can have access to these files uh, so they can make it. What is this one? Is this the um, this fits, sorry after secret papers left at bus stop? <laughs> Wait, what is it? Wait, is this related somehow? The government said it's uh, carrying through up. Uh, 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 it's carrying out a thorough investigation to how classified defense documents were found at a bus stop in Kent. Okay, so maybe this is not related. It just so happens to be. <laughs> it just so happens. To, it just so happens that apparently the Ministry of Defense is like really good. Uh, at just leaving sensitive documents all over the place. Man. <laughs> Happens a lot in the UK. <laughs> uh, yeah, it said it contained details of HMS Defender in the military. Wow, this is just another instance. Oh my God, thank you so much, Nirwin. Wow. <laughs> well... That's it for the news today. Thank you so much, chat, for hanging out. I love you guys. You guys are amazing. Double O Second Seven is slacking over there. Or what? Yes, these have to be the same people who constantly forget passwords. Oh my god. Uh, so what is this? Oh, Jason, what did you say? Except for the document had their UK restricted label crossed out and a stamp unclassified added, as well as having various parts fully blanked. Okay, from that. There you go. Still. Well. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are the best. My name is Mike BAK. Follow me, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitch. F follow me wherever, AK Mike B. Or for the saucy stuff, AK Mike B. Photos. Chat, hang out for a second. Say goodbye to YouTube. All right, that's all you get.